Welcome to our uh, PBIS Leaders Network for January 21st. We're so excited um, to see you here. I already see a typo in the first screen. I hope um, there's not <laughs> as we go along too many comments there. So thank you. We're gonna be talking about um, family engagement today. We're gonna get some updates from ODE today. Um, and we're gonna see some really cool examples, local examples of some family engagement and PBIS practices that are occurring in the region. So I'm really, really excited. Um, be aware again, we are recording. I just wanna let up that we are recording today. Um, and so be aware of that. Since you are uh, on, uh, you have been agreed to be, you're agreeing to be recorded. So let's dive right in. Again, this is just, a, we, we do this every time. This is just a reminder about where everything is found. I know some folks don't use Zoom as much as maybe uh, Google Meet or some other, other um, software, but we wanna make sure that you know you have your control bar, make sure that you are uh, muted. We like to see you if you wanna keep your camera on, um, but we like to keep it muted because we do have some feedback and audio issues. You can open the chat window that should be found on your control bar. And you can also open up the participants window that is all, also found on your control bar. Um, and Stacy, I'm gonna, I'm gonna send it over to you because you are uh, gonna be starting us off this morning. Sure, thanks Heidi. So we wanted to share that um, we do have a bit.ly for today. So if you want to follow along using the bit.ly and then that way any live links, you'll be able just to click right into the bit.ly and follow along. So feel free to join us on there. And I know one of our folks will probably put that in the chat window so you can just click on it. If somebody could do that, I would appreciate it. And then anybody who has their chat window open can just click on it and you can see the presentation. So oh, go ahead and let's look at the next slide, Heidi. Okay. So family engagement, that's gonna be the focus of our conversation today. And we wanted to just get a little look at family engagement at the beginning here. So we took this definition from the Family Engagement Center and you can see that definition, families, education programs and community partners working together to help children and youth learn, grow and prepare for their future. So we wanna take a look today and just as we go through out this morning, kind of keep that definition in mind and start to try to make connections and to the work that's being shared and also thinking about your own school and program and where do you see those connections of family engagement when we're looking at that definition? Okay. So to get us started today, um, we have a great video we want to share, and I know Nick is here from Akron, from Voris. And as we watch the video, again, we put the definition up there of family engagement. We wanted you to think as you watch this short video clip, how does this definition of family engagement appear in the video? And Nick, I don't know if you want to share a little bit about the video before we go ahead and show that. Sure, I can real quick. So hi, I'm Nick Lewis. I'm the school counselor over at Voris CLC. Uh, for Akron Public Schools. So this clip is a raffle we do every month using our PBIS reward system using Class Dojo. Uh, students can buy a raffle ticket for 25 uh, Dojo points. So those enter you into a monthly raffle for each grade level. And then we do grade level drawings. And the winners, we do a home visit. We bring them a balloon, um, some sort of a treat, and a couple gifts from the school. So this is how we show our students uh, every month what we're doing on the announcements. This way it kind of uh, improves participation in the raffle ticket buying. So this is what we've been doing. Awesome, thanks Nick. Okay, Heidi. All right, I, want, I had to, wanted to make sure the sound was on. Um, I wasn't sure if I originally did that. So if you can't hear it, please let me know. But here we go. Time to go visit some people.
Have a great day. So I just love that video, Nick. That's awesome. And, you know, we're looking at that definition of families, education programs, community partners working together to help children and, and youth. And I just look at that and I see all those smiles and I think what better way to make those connections. So if anybody has something they want to, you know, just put in the chat box about what did you see in that video that supports the definition, feel free to do that. And Nick, I don't know if you have anything else you want to add, any anything from that experience, but I just loved all those smiles, especially during this time. <laughs> sure. Yeah, it, it's just been a lot of fun to be able to do that. We do that actually during the school day. So we're like surprising them while they're in class. They're coming away. They come back with their balloons and everything. And the class freaks out. It's, it's been a lot of fun to do it that way. Um, and then also we've added this last for the next three months for January, February, and March, our uh, three expectations at Boris are safe, responsible, respectful. So we are doing uh, responsible January right now. And right now students are actually submitting videos of what they're doing at home, of how they're being responsible to tie in the home piece. So we are compiling videos kind of like this, but um, more in a goofy way of, of showing off how they're being responsible at home and linking that piece. And it's been actually going really well. We've probably had over 40 videos submitted throughout the whole school so far. So wow. we're looking forward to uh, February and March. I love that. That's an awesome way to make that connection between home and school and especially with your framework. So that is, that's awesome. We'll be excited to see those videos too. <laughs> Stacy, it makes me think about too, you know, once you get those parents on your side, I'm sure Nick, you've, you've found that once, you know, you've established the relationship with the parent, you know, the teacher can almost do no wrong. I mean, not that that's a necessarily a good thing, but it's, it's, you got them on your side. And, and if there, a problem does come up, it's so much easier to bridge that conversation with the behaviors that we don't want to see once that relationship is established. So I can just think, how thrilled the parents, I know me as a parent, if somebody would come to my door telling me my kid did such a great thing, you know, I probably would be pretty uh, loyal to that teacher in school from that point forward. So I, I think it just increases that family engagement too. It's so awesome. It's great. Yeah. Thank totally. you. Thanks so much for sharing, Nick. Thank, Thank you. you for having me. So today, we just wanted to share our agenda. We're going to get some PBIS updates, which are going to come up next. Then we're going to take a time to focus a little bit more in depth on family engagement. Then we'll also share some state support team updates. And then we're going to give you a chance to network and really just connect with each other. So that's our agenda for the day. And I'm going to go ahead and turn this over to Heidi. Thanks, Stace. Sorry I stepped on your toes when we started. I, you know, I get always all amped up before we get started. I apologize. Um, we're going to start uh, this morning now with some updates. Um, we are going to be hearing from our regional field coordinator for PBIS in the state of Ohio. Her name is Melanie McGew. She, um, and she can talk a little bit more about that when she gets on with us, but she is our regional field coordinator really, which means for the regions of seven, eight, nine, and 11, I believe that that quad, they call it of our state, she is kind of our conduit between the SST to the to ODE, and she 
um, also helps with getting um, trainings out and, and helping support us at the SST and the ESCs as well. So she's gonna talk a little bit more today about House Bill 318. Um, I hope she talks about the ESC collaboration that we're having throughout the state. And it looks like she may be talking about um, the DSFI, the District uh, Systems Fidelity Inventory, if you're not familiar with that, and some upcoming trainings that are happening throughout the state. So and without any further ado, I'm gonna introduce Melanie McGew. She's gonna to talk to us a little, bit, a little bit about those updates. Uh, welcome, Melanie. Good morning, everyone. Um, I am glad to be here and glad to meet all of you. Um, and thank you, Heidi, for that introduction I was going to share with you. I am one of four regional field coordinators as a part of ODE's Climate Transformation Grant, which is also stemming from the U.S. Department um, grant for school climate transformation. So I do support regions 7, 8, 9, and 11. And part of my work um, before prior to this pandemic was to come up and actually see you all and get integrated um, into each of the regions. So hopefully as the vaccines come on and, and we start hopefully getting to the other side of this pandemic, I'll be able to meet some of you um, individually and I can't wait to do that. Um, I come from a background of um, being a teacher and a building administrator for the first 29 years. I used to say the last 29 years, but I'm kind of entering that ne next um, group of work. So I'm excited about this work. Um, and so I want to share a little bit about House, House Bill 318, where we are, um, how it connects to you. And then I will touch on the DSFI um, and then some trainings that are going on and kind of my role in that. Um, Heidi, is it possible for me to do a screen share? Because I have a couple of slides I'd like to share with everybody. Sure thing. Let me go in and make you a co-host. Okay, that would be great. You should be able to share now. All right. So I know most of you know um, this information, but I just wanted to kind of do a quick overview just to kind of get a baseline. Um, so this is just to kind of go over House Bill 318 really quickly. Let me move this around because I covered up my slide. Okay, there we go. Um, so House Bill 318 um, um, actually came into effect in 2018. That's when the House Bill began. Um, and so we are about three years into it now. Um, and some changes are happening this year or some new pieces are coming into effect. But when it started, it outlined the perimeters around suspension and expulsion. I know um, that you all are probably very familiar with that, especially around pre-K through three students. Um, and it specified some roles and training requirements for our school resource officers. Um, it um, reinforced some requirements around the implement, implementation of PBIS and provided some funding around training for resource officers. Um, so it was really a comprehensive grant when it began. Um, and so student discipline was, at the, at the onset was our main focus about how do we reduce this and how do we put some supports in place to support student discipline? Um, and so um, these were the big, the big picture pieces around that, that districts must permit students to complete missed assignments um, and school suspension must be served in a supervised learning experience of where schools were putting kids in unsupervised places for in-school suspension and kids were alone all day, that could no longer exist. And then that piece around pre-K through three um, prohibited um, suspensions prohibited for minor offenses um, all changed with this house bill. Um, and then these were the reasons being outlined by the house bill of why three pre-K through three kids could be permitted um, to be suspended. So just really large, almost criminal offenses or heavily repeated offenses. Um, for why suspensions or expulsions could happen for very young kids. Um, and so what's happening right now, and I wanted to share this with you, is um, House Bill 318 and some, some work just recently um, in, in ODE um, in October of 2020, um, House Bill 318 and the rule around PBIS that districts need to follow went back to um, the Joint Committee for Administrative Review 
um, for some revisions around the mandatory um, professional development that is um, that is coming up and starting in November of this year of 2021. And we're going to talk a little bit about that as we start as we go forward. Um, but that is currently and the, that rule is currently under review in that joint committee. Um, I asked um, just at our meeting last week if it's if we've heard any updates and they said no, it's still under review. Um, but we're going to talk about what the proposals look like um, for the changes that are that are upcoming um, and how that impacts um, school districts or that will impact school districts. But right now, um, what is in legislation is that all school districts must have must implement PBIS. Um, framework at a, as a system-wide basis at, as a district. So um, as part of the school's climate transformation grant, um, ODE um, works has put together this training format that um, I, I now work under. Um, so how this works is the Ohio Department of Ed and then the Ohio PBIS network work together um, to train um, to, to create trainings um, for system-wide and school-wide trainings. So that's like tier one training, PBIS tier one training, PBIS tier two training, um, and then classroom practices. And then tier three training is in, um, is in the process of being approved in the, from the network and then on to ODE. So that's not quite, even though some of you have had tier three training with, um, your SSTs, it hasn't come through the network through ODE yet in its final form. Um, so once those trainings go through that process, then the regional field coordinators would receive those trainings. And then we start training um, primary trainers. And what we do is we work on creating master trainers because in the school climate transformation grant, what it asks for is that we create um, kind of a plethora of trainers across the state so that we can serve all districts as needed across our street, our state. And so that's what Heidi was talking about is that um, in the past, prior to this, um, prior to 2018-19, our SSTs, our state support teams have been totally responsible for training our schools and school districts. And so in 2019, that summer, um, our ESC consultants started um, working with the Ohio Department of Ed and um, coming on board to support local school districts so that we could make sure that we start building sustainable systems. Um, and so in seeing that, and as part of this grant, um, that's where the um, field coordinators started coming on board. Um, and with the purpose of being to ensure sustainability of practices and systems across the state. So what you see on this chart is the, is the training um, format or flow of training. So what we have is the four regional field coordinators are now training people across the state or, or training ESC and SST consultants. Um, and then those consultants are training district personnel so that we can build sustainable systems. Um, and then we're trying to build sustainable systems at the district level that, to then work with building teams. Oops, sorry, I didn't see my little pop up there. Um, and then building teams, building leadership teams, then work with school implementation. So this is kind of the training format that we have been starting to work with this school year. Well, last school year and then into this school year. And that's kind of how the ESCs are now coming on board and working in conjunction with the SSTs. So Melanie, mm -hmm. districts can expect then maybe their, their local ESC might be reaching out to them to see if they need PBIS support, correct? That's correct. So right now um, I am working with um, SSTs and ESCs um, on a, um, a regional plan of who's working with whom and who's going to be contacted with whom. So our SSTs work mostly with our districts that are in district improvement. 
And then um, just by the way it's set up through ODE, they have a service agreement. And so our ESCs are working, are working mainly to contact our independent school districts or our school districts that are in moderate C in their school improvement efforts. And so that's who they're gonna mainly focus in on to see if there are training needs or coaching needs to um, make sure that they have what's needed um, for PBIS training and coaching. If anyone has questions, um, I can absolutely take those. I hope, is someone monitoring that chat for us? Yeah. So the question is, do we have access to the slides? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I will, I will give Heidi access to the slides. So I'm gonna go on to the rest of the pieces of that house bill. Um, so the next piece of the house bill that comes in effect is um, by no, starting November 2nd of this school year. And what it states is that each school district shall provide professional development in PBIS as part of the school-wide implementation of the framework. And so what does that mean? That means that when you think back to the, fra the, the framework I just showed you, is that as we're implementing PBIS, as we're looking at our data, as we might be looking at our recognition system, or maybe at, a, at our lesson plans or at our school data, and we say, hey, we need to beef up um, maybe the area in this one hallway, we're seeing a lot of office discipline referrals, or it's really congested and kids are having trouble. So let's talk about that. Um, so as we're working with that with our staff, we might start to take a deeper look or a deeper study in that and how can we um, change some of those practices. Within that practice and, and working with our staff, that's the professional development that the leadership team can then lead the staff um, to grow and develop and learn about how can we be more proactive in our um, actions within our school. Um, and so that's what is being called to um, action um, that is occurring in each of our schools um, by this house bill. What it's asking though, is that that, that that training is being monitored and recorded by the local LPDCs. And so we've got to plan for that by each school's PBIS leadership teams. And so if you back up two steps, that means that, that each school has to have a trained PBIS leadership team that understands that big process. And so it trickles all the way down. So do we have um, leadership, PBIS leadership teams within schools that can lead this training? And so that's why we are working forward, trying to get the training out. So let me go to that next step. Um, so just the, the next part, there's like two parts to this house bill. So the first one is that districts are going to provide professional development. Let me, let me talk, let me back up one more step and kind of connect some other things. So I talked about the house bill and the rule and some changes that's in for administrative review. And so the other piece that's being added to that is that that, um, is going to reoccur every three years. Um, and so that's, that's a part that's coming, that's coming forward. And it started off with all teachers and now the, the change is all staff. And so the word teachers to staff is also part of that administrative um, that's under that new rule. And so, so districts are gonna have to look at how are we training the extra staff that is not part of that. So um, cafeteria workers, bus drivers, um, all those extra staff members that we need to make sure are trained in PBIS. And so what does that look like? Um, we have not heard the details of that. It also includes um, a piece around substitute teachers, um, the new, and says that local um, education associations, so school districts are required to train their um, substitute teachers in PBIS. So that's, that's important to know too. So the other piece is not only are you expected to do the, the professional development, but you're also expected to continue to increase your level of implementation of PBIS. And you must report that through EMIS. And so 
um, you must report your level of implementation and you must report your suspensions and expulsions. Um, so that was part of House Bill 318 as well. So we're gonna look at how that level is gonna be reported. Um, and so as schools and school districts um, continue to implement, um, there are stages of that implementation. So when you are just beginning um, to work on PBIS or it's not begun, you would be at level A. It's kind of a backwards chart um, because we think at A is you're doing your best, but um, for this, um, A is just at that beginning stage. So I'm just starting. Um, what this, um, um, how this works is as the, um, as the years progress is where the level of all schools need to be um, in order for a district to receive a yes on their report card for district implementation of PBIS. And it kind of works as the weakest link. So if one school in your district is not meeting um, the lowest requirement for that year, um, your district will get a no on the report card. So as you can see, um, and I have more explanation, a deeper explanation for what these levels are um, and I can give to you. But as of this year at 2021, all schools in um, each district must be at the installation level in order to, for the districts to receive a yes on a report card, which means that teams are forming, training is beginning, um, they're starting to look at data. Um, that's the kind of big picture of what does installation level mean. Um, and as you can see, it's a pretty um, rapid um, implementation as we go forward. As we get to two more years, full implementation, that's at all three tiers. So when um, Heidi talked about where am I at in training? Um, so we've, I've completed training for tier one um, across all my regions, which is so that all my ESCs and SSTs are able to train um, all districts in all regions right now. So if your ESC or your SST is reaching out and say, hey, do you need updated training? That would be a great thing for your district um, or schools to reach out to because I know there are some out there that haven't had formalized training for a while. Um, and then I am in the process of starting tier two training um, with um, to, so that we can have some master master trainers at tier two in February. Um, and then tier three is, is in, the, in the works of finishing up with the PBIS network. Um, so full implementation would mean that all three levels, all three tiers in PBIS is, are being implemented with fidelity. And so when I say the words with fidelity, what does that mean? It means you are using a PBIS assessment um, such as the TFI to measure um, that implementation. So how do you know um, that your implementation is at the highest level? And so um, I know that Heidi has worked hard on sharing the TFI and that might be something that you guys, we might look a little deeper at at another meeting, but there are assessments to a rubric to look at to see, do you have a leadership team? What level is, are you guys meeting weekly? Are you using data to make decisions? Um, are the is the team, um, do you have a recognition system that's, that the um, school is working on, things like that. And so if you have questions, um, where I would lead you to is the Caring Communities um, page on, um, on the Ohio Department of Ed site. It has a lot of information about House Bill 318, um, it's a great site for you. Um, if you haven't been to that, there's a lot of information just kind of for your school and for your school district. Um, there's also a great piece there on suspensions and expulsions. So if you wanted to look at the district level or the state level of where we are on suspensions and expulsions, you could look um, there as well. So that's what I have. If you have any questions, um, feel free to give me, I can ask or I can go through Heidi, um, but I hopefully will be up in your region soon to meet you all. Thanks so Thank much, Melanie. Um, I will pause uh, briefly for questions.
Um, I'm going to I'm going to go ahead and share my screen again. So I'll take a minute if there are questions in the chat or if you'd like to unmute, um, please go ahead and do that. If not, um, you can forward those questions after this meeting to me um, and I can either answer them if I know the answer or I can forward them to Melanie. I'll put I'll put my email in the chat so that if anyone right. wants to email me directly, that's that would be um, they could do that as well. Awesome. Heidi, I am monitoring the chat. The only question was for access to Melanie's slides. So Melanie, if you're okay, when yep. you send those to Heidi, maybe we can merge it right into this presentation so folks will have a, a, the same link. We'll give you full access. Oh, we can just add them. Yep, well, we will absolutely do that. That's a great idea, stuff. Okay, so keep checking back that link, guys. We'll get we'll get those in there. Okay, so we are going to jump in now to back into family engagement after the updates. We saw a great presentation by Boris uh, to start our meeting. Um, it was so cute. Everybody had great responses and reactions. So now we're going to get into family engagement and what does it really have to do with PBIS? And then we're gonna end with another um, example of what's happening uh, actually in Akron schools as well. So family engagement really means including families, um, having them work with school personnel together and they share in the responsibilities to make the educational decisions and improve student outcomes. If you have, If your school has effective family engagement, Families and schools work together to create conditions and practices that allow for ongoing collaboration, coordination, and partnerships. Interventions connecting families and schools are essential to value those youth and mental health outcomes. If you include those family perspectives, you really do include values, um, those families' values and voice in your PBIS system. And it makes your PBIS system more responsive to the needs of students and their families. Intentional efforts to engage and partner with families shows that they're valued as equal partners in the work of educating students. Asking families their preference for how they want to communicate and collaborate with educators ensures a better use of limited resources. So really what we're talking about here is the difference between family involvement and family engagement. There are four things that we, should, we would see in a PBIS school that, that um, really does engage with family engagement and partnering, they do partner with families. The first one is building those positive relationships in schools that, that implement PBIS and they have a strong connection to family engagement. You do see those re relationships being very positive. We see that families' needs and cultural differences are included in that, in that framework. And we know, we know that those schools are proactive to maintain positive trusting relationships with families, such as collecting data on the perception of those school relationships. Another thing that we see with schools that do engage in this work is that you have multiple forms of two-way meaningful communication. Schools will use that data as well as input from educators and families to divide, design those systems um, to provide that to provide uh, ongoing two-way communication with families. Giving families multiple avenues to communicate allows the opportunities for their needs and preferences to be identified and for the school to respond accordingly. So positive relationships and engaging in that two-way communication. The other thing that we're talking a lot about lately and, and we are one of our networks was was based on this topic is that equitable family representation really making sure that the PBIS framework and your building and districts are getting diverse perspectives from families. And that is proportional to the enrollment. So if you do have different groups of ethnic background, of, of different families that come possibly from poverty, uh, other types of groups that you are soliciting representation and feedback from those groups. We want those families to pro provide that input and then PBIS can then be um, have the adjustments made for the implementation as needed. Educators then can employ effective strategies to support those families in their knowledge, skills, and efficacy for supporting student learning, which results really in those families as being empowered. It's important for the schools to cultivate those social connections and networks among their families to support information sharing, and almost more importantly, access to resources. And then finally, we really want to make decision database decisions within this framework and that is that the school does provide a diverse range of opportunities for families to make shared decisions about the PBIS systems in their buildings and families and children receiving those tier two and tier three supports 
are effectively engaged in all decisions related to the support for their child. The other thing that you can think about in addition to these four things is you can look at family engagement in a tiered model, just as you guys are looking at your PBIS tier one, two, and three. You can look at, look at family engagement that way, similar to providing that continuum of supports for students. Information and supports to families can also be provided through a multi-tiered approach. We have, a, we have a, a tool for you at the end of this presentation to look at for that. What you communicate, the type of amount and amount of information that is shared with families may vary depending on the need of each child. So you can think about it in that tiered system. But what we would say, if we have schools and districts that are truly in, engaging in family engagement, you should see these four bullets really happening very much within the framework. So the difference is involvement implies doing to, in contrast, engagement implies doing with families. So a school who's striving for family involvement often leads with its mouth. It identifies projects, needs, and goals, and then kind of tells parents how they can contribute. A school that truly strives for family engagement, on the other hand, tends to lead with, tend to lead with its ears, listening to what parents think, dream, and worry about. The goal of family engagement is not to serve clients, but to gain partners. So it's not that family in, in, in involvement is bad. Almost all the research says that actually it does help, but most all the research also says that family engagement, true family engagement can produce even better results than that for students, families, schools, and for their communities. So we wanted to give you guys a couple of prompts to think about today. How does your school engage with families? Do you have family involvement or truly is it family engagement that, that does value their opinions and their support and it's truly built into your PBIS framework? So the research shows that the more families are engaged, truly engaged, so many things happen um, for that building. In one of the main things is that increased academic performance, but it also leads to other outcomes that you may wanna investigate with your teams. Um, thinking about those four bullets is a great place to start. So what we had planned on doing today, and I'm going to skip this, this um, activity because I would rather hear from our other uh, team that's gonna present, is there is a, is a website that is called uh, Ohio Statewide Family Engagement Center. It is through our state of Ohio, ODE, and it's through Ohio, the Ohio State University, the, make sure you say the, uh, and they have tons and tons of resources for family engagement in general. But I wanted to draw your attention to the family engagement rubric. So if you have the I won't open it up in my window, but if you have the bit.ly open, that should be a live link. If you click on that link, that will take you to a page that will show you three uh, family engagement rubrics, a rubric for tier one, for tier two, and for tier three. What we had planned on having you guys do, and if you wanna stay on after the, after the hour, hour is over, feel free if you wanna investigate those resources, we can, we can open up those breakout rooms. But what those, those rubrics really do is it uses a lot of the work by Joyce Epstein, who is a very um, prominent researcher in the field of family engagement. And it goes through what PBIS in your building would look like if you're truly engaging with families in six key areas. Um, if you open up those rubrics, you can see what those key areas are. Thank you, Stephanie, for posting that in the chat if you wanna click on it. Um, we would like you guys to take a look at those if you're interested in ramping up your family engagement as, as, as it is um, relating to the PBIS framework. Uh, it's very exciting to know that our state network helped develop those rubrics. The, the network that I sit on has a work group that, that actually created all of those rubrics. It's very exciting that our own in Ohio has done that because a lot of the materials we use are not from Ohio for PBIS, but these were truly designed in Ohio. So if you're interested, you can um, in investigate those on your own or please feel free to stay with us at the end of the call. Uh, and we will we'll continue to take a look if you'd like to um, get more information about the family engagement rubrics. Really, really great um, resources. And those are also linked at the end of the presentation. So I, I'm gonna turn it over to uh, Michelle Smith, who is another PBIS consultant at the SST, and she is going to walk us through and have the team walk us through some more great family engagement examples from Akron Public Schools. Thanks, Heidi. 
Um, hello to everyone um, on the meeting. Um, as Heidi said, I'm Michelle Smith, and I am one of the PBIS consultants that supports uh, early learning PBIS across our region. Tell you how excited I am to have Carrie and Christina here uh, with us this morning to share some of the work that they've been doing centered on family engagement. Um, Akron's early learning program, just to give you a little history, was one of the first early learning programs to go through training way back in 2014. They are in their fifth year of implementation. They've been recognized the last three years for their tier one practices. And I always tease Carrie and she always re uh, reminds me that they came into training thinking they were gonna get some tips and tricks for handling kids with challenging behaviors. And now five years later, she says, and we're still doing it. And it's one of the greatest things that our program has done. So it always makes me smile. And from the beginning, they have included families, a family member is a part of their leadership team. It has always been at the forefront of what they've done to support PBIS. Um, I always say um, one of the best indicators to know whether or not PBIS is truly happening in a program is to hear it from parents. If parents know what those expectations are, it's happening. And I can truly say, uh, it was about a year ago, I was doing an overview uh, PBIS training with Stephanie, and there happened to be a parent of one of the um, ELP um, students in that training. I had no idea. And halfway through the training, she pulled me aside and she said, this is happening in my daughter's preschool. Safe, kind, and responsible. My daughter sings the song every day. It's on our refrigerator. She's like, it's all connecting for me. And I'm so proud that um, that's happening in her school. And so that for me says they're doing it and, and they're, they're doing it very well. So kudos to that team. They've put in a ton of work over the last five years. I don't know many teams that have worked harder. And um, when they flipped over to uh, remote, everything shut down in March. They just kept pushing forward and um, developed resources um, that are pretty incredible for the challenges that preschoolers face in a remote setting. Um, and so a lot of their focus this year has been on how can we best engage families to help engage all of those um, ELP students that are at home right now. So without further ado, I'm going to turn things over to Carrie and Christina um, to share some of the things that they've done this year to support kids and families remotely. Hi, I'm Christina, and I think the first slide is a video that we made a, a couple years ago that's shared on our website and it's shared with we have parent meetings every year in person where we go over PBIS and actually there's a parent meeting coming up virtually sometime this month or next month um, that's going to focus on PBIS. So this is a video that we share with families. So go ahead. This program is based upon a philosophy of recognizing positive contributions of students. Parents, teachers, and students must work together to maintain a safe learning environment. As part of PBIS, teachers, administrators, and support staff have the responsibility to teach positive behavior expectations to students. This in turn helps enable them to make positive choices. Our PBIS expectations are as follows. Be kind, be safe, and be responsible. Students who take responsibility to behave positively will be recognized and rewarded in a variety of ways. In the classroom, when teachers catch students demonstrating these behaviors, they get to add a token to a reward chart, fill a bucket with pom-poms, or earn class dojo points. Once they've filled the chart, bucket, or earned enough points, the students receive a reward on which the class voted. Putting PBIS into practice. Be kind. Have fun with friends, share toys, ask others for toys, give personal space, hands to self, follow directions, shake hands and give high fives, and help others. Be safe. Stop, look, and listen. Follow directions. Use walking feet. Keep hands to self. Listen to adults. And wear a bike helmet. Be responsible. 
Take care of yourself, friends, school, home, and community. Wash hands, use the restroom, throw food away, clean up messes, and put toys away during cleanup time. What is your role as a parent? Learn the three expectations. Be kind, be safe, and be responsible. Ask your children what the expectations are in their school. Explore together ways these expectations can be met at home, at school, and in the community. For more information on PBIS, visit pbis.org or the Ohio Department of Okay, so at the beginning of this school year, uh, we made a folder for every single student. And in that folder, there was a brochure explaining PBIS to the families some visuals of our expectations and um, broken down into some little rules for online learning, some conscious discipline, breathing visuals, and an explanation. Um, and teachers do go over those in the classroom virtually and in person, but it's something that we do regularly with the students, but we wanted parents to be able to do that at home too. And then a copy of a reward chart for families to use at home. And we do send this home um, during the regular during the school year when we're in person as well. Um, but we wanted them to have a couple of these reward charts to use at home during online learning too. So um, I think the next few slides are examples of these things. So there's some of our virtual rules like uh, for being kind, just being a friend, listening, taking turns talking, um, to be safe, have an adult nearby, have only school tools right near you and to stay in your spot, stay in one place. And being responsible, being dressed for school. This is one that a lot of kids need reminders on. Um, no electronics on other than the computer. You got to turn off the TV and phones um, and to have a learning spot where you're going to work on your, your school, your online learning. Um, and there's a copy of the breathing visuals that we sent home so that they can have a visual on paper to look at at home. And then the next slide, we have this on the back of that paper, just explains again how to do all of those breathing techniques. These are conscious discipline breathing techniques. Um, and we use a lot of conscious discipline as part of our PBIS. So like I said, we do this regularly as a group and then parents can also do it at home on their own if, if they need. And then the next slide is the reward chart for at home. So if a family catches their child being kind, being safe, being responsible, they could put a sticker or an X or some kind of mark in each box and they can decide when they fill their sheet what kind of reward they would like to do at home. So we sent home a couple of those at the beginning, at the beginning of the year and then they can, we can send more or share them online if parents need more. So that's a way for them to kind of keep track of positive behaviors and work towards a, a goal or a reward. And um, Carrie, did you want to go over the next step? Yeah. yeah. Hi, everyone. I hear a lot of reverb. Um, hi, everyone. I'm Carrie. I'm one of the itinerant teachers at Akron Public Schools. Um, so the last part of the presentation is we have a be kind, be safe, be responsible challenge. And um, one of the things we do for this is we complete the tasks in the challenge. And I'll show you an example of this so you know what I'm talking about. And the kids can fill in the board as they complete each task. You know, they could um, either color in each space or put a check mark there so they know they've done each task. And then the last part is to just celebrate with your child when the board is filled. So offer them some kind of reward for them to work towards, whether it is wearing pajamas all day or having ice cream that night, um, whatever the reward you choose as a parent is. And then the next slide is just an example of the Be Kind, Be Safe Challenge. So as you can see here for the Be Safe Challenge, um, so they're just the little rules for us broken down, like use your walking feet, listen to my parents, hold hands when crossing the street. So they're all relevant for home activities rather than school activities. So once the child has filled up the chart, that's when they receive the reward. So that has been done for all three of our expectations for the children and the families. And then one last thing I wanna add is every year we have um, several presentations that we give to parents. 
um, to try to engage them in PBIS. And this year, the presentation is Monday, um, but we just present PBIS, show the video and go over some of the expectations and stuff like that. And it's been well received by our parents. So does anybody have any questions? Feel free to pop in the chat or unmute if you have questions for the early learning program and Carrie or any, or for that matter, any questions um, for the, the first video that we had too, we could open it up for that as well. Give everybody a minute. <laughs> a lot of great ideas, great ideas. Carrie, any one thing that you could um, say as far as family engagement with the early learning program, what has been what has been most impactful, do you think, with your PBIS implementation as far as family engagement is concerned? Get well, in terms involved. of this year in particular, I feel like people have really gotten to know families even more, more than they have ever known <laughs> them in the past because we are remote learning. So I think the biggest impact was just sending home the expectations with the little rules underneath and just this be safe, be kind, be responsible challenge. I think that really engages them and makes them think about, you know, how can we do this PBIS at home? How can we do this with our kids so they can learn rules at home and this could transfer to home as well. Um, so I think those have been the most impactful thing, I would say, the challenge and the sending of the virtual rules as well. Okay, great. Nick, I'll ask you the same question if you want to unmute. What, what do you think has been the most impactful for Boris as far as PBIS and, and uh, PBS implementation with family engagement? Um, just making them aware and like okay, the families are helping the, the, kiddos, the, the kids right now really shooting videos and so we're getting responses from them with responsible uh, January that, hey, thanks for uh, my kids doing more cleaning around the house than they've done <laughs> ever. And so thank you so much. And and, they're, and we're saying, hey, this is coming up in February, March, too. And it, they're getting more on board. This is um, what, our second full year of implementation. Mm -hmm. So I, I believe so. Um, yeah. Yeah, we're, we're, we're really getting everyone used to it. it. It's it's going well. I'm stealing some of VLPA's ideas now. Thank you guys so much. <laughs> Awesome. And, and we didn't have time, but Nick did share with me the videos of the kids making videos in their homes. And it, it just blows your mind because the one little girl what, what was talking about what keep, keeping her clean, her room clean looked like and went to her brother's room. And it was just awesome to see the parents videoing and the kids doing those behaviors. So I thought that was a fabulous, fabulous idea. Another way to kind of through the back door, get family engagement, maybe they're not even realizing they're doing it, but if they're videoing the the video for for the school or for the child it's kind of getting them involved in your pbis framework kind of on the back end which is kind of cool which i really yeah like. i love that idea i think we should steal that idea carrie and have some of our students have videos of themselves following the rules i think that would be really <laughs> cool for us too i know that in some of our classrooms the teachers are doing that on oh i don't know remember what app that is but that would be really cool to have it shared at a um iid day or a meeting day for sure Yes, definitely. Thank you guys so much for sharing such great, such great, great resources um, and examples for, for family engagement. The, uh, the last thing I'll just say is remember that the research always says engage, uh, involvement is good, but engagement really gets you better outcomes. And I think you can really see people starting to get very much engaged by the examples that you've seen today. So we wanted to share with you some resources that you can go to following this meeting um, the rubrics you guys might have already clicked on, that is that first link. We, I talked a little bit about a, a tiered approach to family engagement. The Ohio um, State Center, the Family Engagement Center has put together, it's called a note catcher. And basically what it is, is it actually has you guys think about a practice. And then you, you look at the tiers of that practice. So when, when I talked about using the framework to actually tier your family engagement through a multi-tiered framework, this particular handout or um, document can actually have you do that. So if you're interested in looking at family engagement through a tiered perspective, that second link would be something that you could look at. 
Um, information for families about positive behavioral intervention and supports is another link to the family engagement, um, the website through Ohio State and ODE. That has examples of things that you can use, such as already created presentations to introduce PBIS to families or to bring families in and show them how to create a matrix at home. So if you want, and I think we've seen that with some of the examples today, if you want an, um, a standard presentation that's already done, you can click on that. And all you do is you pop in your expectations and your information. And then finally, the SST Regional Warehouse, we do have our local examples there. We share that with you probably every time we meet. Uh, th those have local examples of family engagement in that particular folder. The other thing we wanna share with you um, is our podcast that we've started. The first season is all about ramping up relationships and PBIS related. Um, we're really, really excited about it. It was a tremendous amount of work. I can speak for myself on that one, um, but it is, I think it's awesome. We have right now, I believe, a trailer and two episodes that are have been released. Every Friday, we will release another, uh, another podcast. They're generally pretty short. Um, we are gonna have, our next one is gonna be an interview with Missy McLean, if you're interested. That will drop this Friday at 8 a.m., I believe. Um, and then the next one is gonna be an interview with Stephanie Martinez. Those are a little bit longer. Generally, we keep them either under eight minutes or just eight considerations, but our interviews tend to be a little bit longer. So please, in whatever podcasting app you use, look for us, it's called Eight With Eight. And we're really excited. We're gonna have some really great, um, great interviews and great information. And if you're a literacy person, next season is gonna be literacy. There'll be eight episodes. We'll do eight for PBIS and eight for literacy. And we are gonna have Natalie Wexler as our first literacy podcast. And I'm really excited about that as well. And then just some updates for us as we close out. Um, here are some uh, upcoming trainings that we're having, refreshers. Um, and uh, if you're interested in that, oh, <laughs> thanks, Nick, the podcast is cool, thank you. Um, if you're interested in doing some of those classroom practices, we do have the PBIS Effective Classroom Practices on Demand.